is Melon B or Melon from Facebook or MelonB.se.com and this is my tutorial to make this really cute mini amigurumi mushrooms or toadstools. Uh, this is an original pattern but I thought I would share it with you guys. Uh, for mine I used worsted weight yarn, more specifically I used Red Heart Super Shaver and obviously I used felt for the spots or dots but you can use any other fabric. You can crochet those if you like, etc. It's totally up to you. I do have these available at my shop, uh, which the links will be below, but my shop is melonb.etsy.com. Again, the links are below. Uh, if you do stay until after the tutorial, I will be showing you guys how to turn yours into magnets or into keychains. So I hope you enjoy. Bye. Starting at the top, I'm using some blue scrap yarn. This is light blue. And I'm using my G-hook. As my marker, I will be using this small piece of scrap yarn. Okay, so the first row for the top is to make five inside a magic circle or a ma magic ring. Okay, so we have five stitches in total, as you can see. And the second row is to make increase and increase in all the stitches. So in total we have 10. I'm gonna place my marker and start to increase. one nine and ten okay so we have ten completed stitches the third rail is to do one single crochet and one increase so on the first stitch we do one single crochet and in the one after that we do an increase and just repeat until you reach the end of the round so we do one single crochet and one increase. Repeat, one single crochet, one increase, until you go all the way around. In total, that gives us 15 stitches, or 15 single crochets. The fourth row is to do two single crochets in the next two stitches and one increase on the third. So in the first stitch we do one single crochet, the second stitch also one single crochet, the third stitch we do an increase. Just pull some up of the yarn here. Okay, and we repeat that. One single crochet, one single crochet and one increase and you repeat that all the way until you reach the end of the round okay we uh, we got to the end of the round that gives us 20 stitches in total now the next row is to do two rows of single crochet. So we do two rows of single crochet. That means each of the next two rows is going to have 20 stitches since we're just doing single crochet all the way around. So let's start with the first row. It's just single crochet all the way around. It should total to 20 stitches. Okay, we have completed the first row. Now we do one more row of single crochet all the way around. And again, you should be having 20 stitches uh, total in the round.
19 and the last one 20. Okay, so we have completed our two rows of single crochet. Now, this is the last row. We do two single crochet stitches in the next two and one decrease. So, in the first stitch, we do one single crochet. The second stitch, we also do one single crochet. And between the third and the fourth stitch, we do one decrease. And we repeat. One single crochet, one single crochet, and one decrease. And we continue this all the way around. The last one. One single crochet, one single crochet, and one decrease. Okay, in total we should have 15 stitches. Now this is where we have to finish off, and we're going to be leaving a tail at the top, on the top here, because that is what we will be using to sew to the bottom of the mushroom. So to finish off, what I usually do is just slip stitch, slip stitch into the next stitch, cut my yarn, and again I want to leave a pretty long tail here so I can sew it to the bottom, cut my yarn, and then pull it through. And I don't worry about tying a knot here or anything because since we will be using this to sew it to the bottom, um, it's, going to be, it's going to be secure enough. And I'm removing my marker. So you turn it inside out. And this is the top of our mushroom. Pretty tiny. The bottom is similar to the top. To start, we do 10 in the magic circle. So instead of starting with 5, for the bottom we start with 10. Okay, we have 10 in the magic circle and I just want to tighten it up a little bit. You can pull as hard as you want. That will close up the hole in the middle. Okay, we have 10 in the magic circle. The next, the next row is to do one single crochet in the first stitch and one increase in the next. The first stitch we do one single crochet. In the second stitch, we do one increase. And we repeat one single crochet and one increase. Okay, we're done with the round and that should give us 15 stitches total. Now this is the last row. The last row is to do single crochet in all of the stitches. So we just do one row of single crochet and you should have 15. So you do one single crochet in every stitch. Fourteen and fifteen. Okay, so we have completed the bottom of our mushroom. We want to just finish it off. I'm going to slip stitch into the next stitch. Um, cut a short tail. We don't need a long tail here uh, because we're going to sew it together with the tail we left on the top. I'm just going to pass it through uh, through that loop twice and then tighten it up. Remove my marker. Turn it inside out and that is the bottom and this will be going with the top like so okay so I stuffed the top with some fiber fill which I have here you can use whatever you want to stuff it so I'm stuffing the top with some fiber fill I'm going to take my long tail and thread it through my needle
Okay. And then I'm gonna take my top, I mean my bottom, and I'm going to make sure that all the tails are tucked inside so none are sticking out from the actual amigurumi. And the way I like to sew this mushroom together, I'll try to get a close up so I can show you guys. Okay, actually, because this is kind of sticking out a little bit, I like to go underneath that stitch. I don't know how well you can see that. Hopefully it's focusing. Let me see. Okay, I like to go underneath that stitch, like so, just so the, the tail end on the top is not sticking out all that much. And I like to pair it up with the ends or the tail in the bottom as well. If you can see, this is the knot where we have the tail. I like to match them up as closely as I can, but it's not a must. So now the way I like to sew it together is, you can see that my tail is sticking out from the middle of these two stitches. As you can see, I like to go into maybe the next the next stitch. Let me see where I'm, where I'm at. Okay, let's go into the next stitch, as you can see. And we're going to stick this through into the first stitch, or one of the stitches in the bottom. If you can see, I'm sticking it in, into the stitch, or in the middle of the stitches, if that makes sense, in the gap between the stitches, and pulling it out on the other side. And I'm gonna match this up with pulling it out between the stitches on the top. And what it's going to do, as you can see, this is going to be pulling the bottom into the top and you will have a basic unnoticeable or a stitch that you can't see because it's being pulled into the inside if that makes sense. So we're going to repeat it with the next one. I'm going to the next stitch, then I'm going to the next one in the bottom, pull it up and match it up with Going between the next stitch and pull not all that tight but pull enough so that, that so that uh, you cannot see the stitches from the bottom and then just do that all throughout If you have some sticking out, don't worry. You can always go back and pull it in. Seems like we caught some of the tail, so you can just cut that off. Pull. And we're almost, almost close up completely. If you need more fiber fill, you can always stuff it now before you close, close it up completely. I'll add just a little bit more. And just continue until everything is closed. I think we're done and you check to see how everything's fitting. This looks good. This will be the mushroom, and this will be the back since you have the knots back there. Now to finish this off, I like to go in and pick up one loop, or you can pick up as many loops as you want. I usually pick up one that's nearby my finishing spot, pull through, not completely. Before I do so, I like to tie a knot in there and pull tight. Then I do like to tie one more knot just to make sure everything stays secure. And pull through as close as I can uh, to the first knot. And then I like to go into 
the piece, whatever it is you're working on, I like to go inside or in it um, pretty close to where my knot is and usually between stitches. So let's go up here between that stitch and I'm gonna poke the needle all the way through the other side and pull through. I'm gonna pull enough to where I see that my knot is all the way inside the piece and you can always come back make sure your knot is gone and you pull out or you, you fix it how you want it to look. So you can see that we cannot see the knot anymore. It's all the way in. So I would pull the tail taut a little bit, snip it pretty close to the piece, then fluff it up and you can't tell where your tail was. This is our mushroom. You can see this is the back because the blue part or the top of the mushroom is a little bit lower. It sits a little bit lower on the bottom of it. So the part that sits a little bit higher, that is the face or the front of the mushroom. Uh, for the dots, you can you can use whatever color. You can crochet these. You can, you know, not add uh, spots. Whatever you want to do. For me, I am using felt dots that I cut out. And uh, these are about actually these are the size of a quarter, a U.S. quarter. I don't know the exact dimensions, but if you know how big a quarter is, and then you'll be able to cut these out to size or to the size that I am using. And I'm going to pin them with some pins just to kind of show you guys how I like to position them. What I like to do is uh, for my mushroom, I'm going to include or put on it five, five dots in total. So I like to start with a really front. So you decide where where your front or where the face of the mushroom will be. And I like to put one right in the front. So I'm just gonna pin it there. And then I like to go all the way to the back and pin one on the back, directly in the back as well. So that will be right around there. Pin it. And I would put two on the sides. Now that I have the front and the back put on, I can kind of eyeball it to where uh, where the third one would go right in between. So I would pin that. And I'm leaving just a little bit, a little space underneath the dots. You can see it's not much. And the same thing with the fourth, uh, the fourth dot. I can kind of eyeball it as to where it would go. And you can always double check if you look at it from the top, you can kind of see how how evenly spaced they are and you can move it around, move them around accordingly since you haven't glued them on or anything yet. And obviously the last one would go on the top right here. This is an example of how I put the dots on. So I told you guys I first glued it on. So this is glued on and after that I embroidered it. So um, I'm pretty sure the dots will stay on. Also, I did add a face. You know that these are inspired by the mushrooms in the Mario games, and they usually have a face on them. For the eyes, I just used crochet thread, but you can definitely use regular thread if you like, or you know any color yarn, etc. And because the top, I'm sorry, because the bottom is such a small piece, it's really easy to see exactly where I put the eyes. Um, as you can see the middle circle here, that's the first row. So I put the eyes on the second row and I positioned them right underneath the dot or the spot that is in the front or the face of the mushroom. So you can kind of eyeball that as well. And once you're done with that, um, it is complete. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I hope it was easy for you to understand. If you do have any other questions or comments, leave them down below. If you want some specific information, uh, you can PM me here through YouTube or leave me a comment also on my blog, which is where you will find uh, the free pattern for these. You are free to sell or to gift or do whatever you want to do with your completed mushrooms or items but i the only thing i do ask for you is to give credit or credit is due so please do not take credit for the written pattern if anybody wants to know what it is 
please just let them know that it's in my blog and where to find it. Um, I get to find this at Walmart. And to make your mushroom tail magnet is really easy. You put all the dots on except the one in the back. For example, this one, it has all the four dots except the one in the back. And what I will, I will be doing is I will be gluing the magnet in the back. And again, these magnets are not super strong uh, because the mushroom themselves are so light. They don't have to be. And I would just hot glue this on. And I found that hot glue works pretty well to attach those on. Uh, this one has it on. As you can see, it's not going to be coming off unless you really yank it or cut it off. Now, to put on the keyring, I would suggest using two things. At least this is how I do it. I find it the easiest. I suggest you get a uh, stapler remover that's pretty useful into opening your key ring and your crochet hook. The first thing I do, and this is a completed mushroom by the way, the first thing I will do is pick the, the place where I want the key ring to go. I usually put them on the spot between the two dots, one of the side dots and the top. And you can see there's maybe one row there kind of showing. I usually uh, pick up two of those stitches somewhere around there with my crochet hook and then put the key ring on. So I would say, let me see, I would say about there you can see that I have two stitches picked up and my crochet hook, the one I'm using, has a little thicker spot as you can see there where you see the lettering or the size of the crochet hook and I will slide um, my two stitches on that, on that part and just leave it there and that will make it a little easier for me to put my keyring on. Now the keyring I like to open with Again, the staple remover, and you would just open it up a bit like this. That should be enough. It's just enough so it can catch on and move through the stitches. So I pick up my mushroom, and then hopefully you can, you can see this. I will try to slide it in. I don't know if I got that or not. Okay, I did. As you can see from there, hopefully. Uh, the the ring was was able to go through both stitches, so I will just slide it completely, and then I can remove my hook, and there you go. You can see it is completely through both stitches, and my mushroom looks like this, and it would now be complete and ready to put on a keychain.